need to take to this time with smash cut. Hey, have you ever thought about stuff? I mean, I think about stuff all the time. I think about the things I eat, the things I drink, the things I stand on. I think about stuff all the time. Now, when I'm thinking about stuff, the thing I'm really thinking about is called matter. Have you ever heard of matter before? Matter is anything that takes up space and weighs something or has mass. So matter is a lot of different things. It's a lot of different stuff. So when we talk about matter, we really are trying to think about these things that we call atoms. Have you ever heard of atoms before? And I'm not talking about that weird family that lives down the street. I'm talking about the tiny little building blocks that make up everything. Now the important thing to know about atoms is that when they make up everything, they can make up me, they can make up you, they can make up water, they can make up your hamburgers, they can make up anything. So anything that we talk about is made out of atoms. I'm riding a train made out of atoms. These are all atoms. Yep, smells like atoms. Now atoms, they can come in uh, a bunch of different little groups that we call molecules. So when a bunch of atoms come together, they make a group, we call that a molecule. Now molecules, they can act in a lot of different ways. They can be really close together, they can be really far apart. And then depending on how much energy they have, they are in what we call different states. They can either be a solid, a liquid, or a gas. All right, kids. So today we're gonna to try to learn about how those three different states of matter act like. We're gonna do a dance to make it work. So the first one that we need to remember about are solids. Solids, they don't have a lot of energy and they don't move around a whole lot. So they put their hands out like this and they're like, solid, 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 solid. Can I get you guys to do that too? All right, here we go. Solid, 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 solid. I can't hear you. Solid, solid. So now that we've learned about what the states of matter are, we need to figure out what we're gonna do with them. We have our solids, liquids, and gases. Now here at the Science Center, what we do is we take those same states of matter and we try to tie them together by using a show that we call the cryogenics show. Now have you ever heard of cryogenics before? No? Well cryogenics is the study of what happens to things when they get cold. And I don't mean just like hanging out at like five degrees Celsius kind of day. I'm talking really, really, really cold. Now, to make this all kind of work, we're gonna to have to try to use something to make things really, really cold. And we can't just use a freezer, and we can't just throw it outside. It's only like minus five degrees today. We're gonna to have to use something to do it. And I've got just the thing to make that work. Oh, oh. Got, got our special ingredient here already. Now this bucket, is filled with something called liquid nitrogen. Now liquid nitrogen is very, very, very cold. Have you ever had thought about what the coldest day ever is? The coldest day we've ever had on Earth is about minus 85 degrees Celsius. Liquid nitrogen is much colder than that. Liquid nitrogen is minus 196 degrees Celsius. Now, to kind of work with it, we can do lots of cool things, but the most important thing we gotta do is we gotta be safe. So luckily, I've got all my safety gear right back there. Let me just grab it. Hi everyone, I'm Sally Science, and I love it when you send questions for us to answer. Today we have a question from April. Thanks, 
April. I love flowers too, and I can't wait to share all about how they grow. First of all, they start out as tiny little seeds, and we plant them in the soil so they're nice and warm. And then they feel safe, and they have food to eat in the soil called minerals. But they also get thirsty, so we also have to water them. If they're outside, the rain will fall and give them a drink. But if they're inside, we have to water them ourselves. And then when they're safe, and they're happy, and they're fed, and they're watered, they grow roots in the ground so they can grow really tall, and then they blossom petals, and they bloom the beautiful flowers that you love. But here's the cool part. So bees and butterflies will fly around into the center of the flowers and dance around, and that helps the flowers make more seeds that fall to the ground and then start all over again. Thanks for sending in your questions. We love to hear more of them. This is Sally Science, signing out. All right, so now that we've learned about how cold liquid nitrogen is, we have to know how to be safe when we work with it. Because when things are that cold, it can be really, really dangerous. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to grab our safety glasses. We gotta get those thrown on here. There we go. So now our eyes are nice and safe. We're not gonna get any liquid nitrogen splashing up into our eyes. And the next thing we have to wear is a good old pair of cryogenic gloves. There. So these gloves are gonna make it so if any liquid nitrogen was to get onto our hands, we wouldn't get anything really dangerous happening to them. It would keep them nice and warm so we get no liquid nitrogen on them. But now that we've kind of talked about our safety, we need to talk about what liquid nitrogen looks like. So I'm gonna take the lid off our bucket here. I'm gonna grab a pair of tongs out of my pocket. We'll grab a little bit of our liquid nitrogen. Now liquid nitrogen, as I mentioned, is minus 196 degrees Celsius. So as we have it sitting in our beaker, it's starting to boil right now. If you look at it, it looks really much a lot like boiling water. It's just much different temperature. Hey, how you doing? Tommy Tungsten here for Elements R Us with another super special sale. Today only, hydrogen. A real explosive deal. Buy one, get one free. As a gas that's lighter than air, you can use it to float balloons. It's easily ignite, ignite, wham, it lights on fire real good. So you can use it to weld stuff together or even shoot rockets up into space. Don't be fooled by those bozos telling you this stuff is everywhere. I mean, sure, it makes two thirds of each water molecule that covers nearly three quarters of the Earth's surface. And so what if the sun is made up of 70% of the stuff? Who's gonna go all the way to the sun just for some hydrogen. You want some hydrogen? I know a guy. Come on down to Elements R Us, your first stop for the first element on the periodic table. When you get there, tell them Tommy sent you. Capiche? All right, little scientists. Well, I hope you really like this show. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below, or you can also send us a message on either Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and we'd be more than happy to answer all of those questions in a future video. Now, I think we have a really good show uh, set up for you next time. We're gonna be learning about what happens to uh, solids, liquids, and gases when we put them into liquid nitrogen. So we're gonna learn about more of those in our next episode. Thank you so much for joining us, and I uh, hope to see you guys at, in the next one. Say goodbye, Mr. Hand. <laughs>